Yeah, that's when I first started. That's a. Uh, it's post super cool. Post super cool. Yeah, that's a layup on 183rd between Burnside and 183rd. Walking the catwalk, man. Really dangerous tag. <laughs> Over here is the Graffiti Hall of Fame. Actually, what I did, well, these guys were the Tatch crew. They were gonna paint this wall on the weekend, and the wall had basically just solid colors. So I was venturing from school one day, and I says, "What the hell? Let me put a little tag in the corner. I don't want to destroy the guy's wall, right?" Mm -hmm. So. I did that on Friday. Monday I went back, the whole wall was completed by these guys with the mural and everything, and they put a star around my name, which was real cool. They gave me props, man. Which was done at Times Square, you know, last stop, everybody off. What, what I think his, his legendary contribution is, is like this two-tone marker. That's so you actually man. blend two colors of ink in the same marker. No one has ever done that before or since, and that was really uh, more a thing for Voice of the Ghetto because he used to do that in the trademark uh, corner panel where the advertisement where you'd look on each corner of the train and there'd be like these Voice of the Ghetto tags with the quotation marks around in like three colors sometimes like blue, green, wow. black just amazing <laughs> you know I mean like his tag was better than almost seeing a, a piece on the train and it, it had that kind of perfect lettering where no matter where you are on the train, like some tags just stand out. And uh, I mean, if you want to say phase two was like the style master in terms of piecing, in terms of tagging, I, I mean, even today, you know, actually today, uh, there are less people who have the ability to tag well. Uh, they can piece their ass off and, and uh, you know, the art is at an all time high, but Nobody seems to really put it attention, with a few exceptions, uh, to the actual signature, which, I mean, this is a classic, what can you say? When you resurfaced in 2000, did you have any idea what kind of reaction you were going to get from like the current day graph community and the old school guys that are still around? I had no idea. I didn't even envision that this thing would go this far, man. You know, it just skyrocketed. It just went from this to that, man. And I saw the whole evolution. But what really ma made me uh, come back was when they did that show out at Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And I attended that. And that's where I ran into guys like Case 2, Bama 1 that I hadn't seen in 25 years. And they uh, had that article in the Times. And after that, uh, while you were sleeping, Chris Freedom came out with this article. Legendary writer Stay High 149 returns after 20 years. I said, well, shit, man, I gotta make a comeback now. They said, I'm back, so I gotta come back. And that's when I started the whole shit all over again. Spot. How much of that was uh, around back then? You know, like people getting their markers, take, beat down at the bench. Yeah, they would do that, you know. Uh, guys that didn't uh, really run with anybody that was known. You were like an easy prey, man. You know, those young kids come up, uh, what you got in the bag? Uh, let me see your marker. All right, thanks a lot, buddy. See you later. You know, you know, you had guys that take advantage of people and weaker people. But I never did that, you know. Easy to. And I was lucky. I never had any problems with that. And I was to be able to get along with everybody, you know what I mean? So, lucky me.